So now, I think in our first talk, we were told to ask the right question, which is who we are. Then Ian gave us the right means to answer that question and the right tools. In the third video we saw, we found that the human spirit cannot be broken. And here I am presenting to you, maybe this is a way that you can consider. Okay, so like, I, uh, like the presenter said, I'm interested in politics, so I will ask a question about politics because this is election time. How many of you, how many of you voted? Excellent. Now, how many of you think that water supply is an election issue? Or was an election issue? Not very many. Okay, I can understand that. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you think that water supply was one of the reasons why people couldn't go to vote? How many? All right, no, no, you, are, you, know, you don't count, you don't count. <laughs> so nobody. But that's exactly what happened. And not too far away from us, Delhi. In Delhi, scores of people couldn't go to vote because they really didn't know when their water supply was going to be delivered. This is the story of pretty much all cities in India. Water supply is intermittent. What that means is that you will receive water once every three to 10 days. Take a second and think about it. Once every 10 days. Water supply goes from one area in the city, moves on to the next, and so on and so forth. But the problem is that unfortunately, nobody really knows when actual supply is going to take place. And this is a problem because I faced it every day for the past 15 years. My father has been waking up religiously at 5 a.m. to hope that water will be there at his doorstep. So when I moved back to India, this is the problem I wanted to solve. Nothing big, just this. Can we build a system that could inform people a little bit in advance when their water supply was going to start? So we thought, we'll do something fancy. You know, we'll do a smart grid. Now, I don't know how many of you know what smart grids are. You know, I wouldn't know when I started out. But we thought we'll not do it the traditional way, not with sensors, not with stuff, you know. We will use sensors, but not necessarily immediately. What we want to use is this. Mobile phones and people. We wanted to build a smart grid that was powered by humans and enabled by mobile phones. So before I tell you how we set it up, uh, how many of you know exactly how a city's water supply happens? Let me tell you, give you a very brief premiere. In every part of the city, there is a valve mill. And this valve mill has a basic job. He goes on, he turns the water on and off in an area. So we said, first step we need to do is we need to turn this valve mill into a consistent and accurate source of information. I mean, of course, people said, looked at us, you know, really, you think that the valve men are going to give you information? Why do you think they'll do that? So we said, okay, we'll work on it. We worked on it, and we cracked it. Second, we said, we need in our smart grid citizens. Citizens to provide us feedback on the information we are providing them. So, for example, I tell you that your water supply is going to start at 10.30. Uh, you receive a message, uh, 11 a.m. turns out, no water. So what you do is you send me an SMS or you send me a missed call back telling me I didn't receive water. Now I know that there is a problem in that particular area. If I can provide that information in real time to the engineers, and if they take immediate action, that problem can be solved in the fraction of the time that it is being solved right now. So very simple, citizens provide us feedback, excellent. Again, people said, do you really think citizens are going to respond to you? It's going to be difficult. And 7,000 feedback instances later, I think we are succeeding. We are getting people to give us answers back. So with the same stubborn spirit, we want to answer this third assumption, which is, you know, engineers, it sounds a little bit difficult. You know, you give them information and they'll do something for you. This is not something that we expect, usually. But again, 
we challenged the assumption and we found that there are places where you can actually get success. Last summer, about 7,500 families were able to receive water when they otherwise wouldn't have ad adequate supply because the engineers were using this system. You know, they were finding, okay, there is a problem here, switch it to the other place, switch it to the other place, and there was a system difference. There was a difference in the way the water was being supplied. So, this is how a mobile enabled smart grid looks. But think about how powerful that is. Every citizen of India can make their public services work for them just by using a mobile phone. And what I'm trying to indicate to you is not you know, uh, the smart grid or something that has worked, but something beyond, which you guys have captured incredibly in these three words, defy, dream, and discover. It's challenging the assumptions. You know, we will use the analogy that Ian gave, and I, I absolutely love that phrase, RFA. We always ask these questions in India, you know, India is not going to grow as fast as China, we have all these kinds of problems for X, Y, and Z reasons, for because of this guy, because of that guy, we give them a lot of RFA. I am here to ask you this question, why? Why does it have to be like that? Can is, is there a way that we can think about problems differently? That's where your next billion dollar idea lies. And I disagree with a little bit with, with Sham, what Sham said, you know, everybody wants to be a billionaire. I think I am trying to give you a recipe of every one of us becoming billionaires in solving these problems. The other, impor the Im other important thing here is that you can have tremendous, tremendous impact. So every few months we organize, you know, customer uh, town halls, we call it. You know, we invite about 20 to 25 families of customers and about every time we have at least 15 of them show up. How many of you know of a service for 10 rupees for which you will be ready to devote your entire Saturday afternoon? Anyone? Any service, 10 rupees, all, all Saturday afternoon? I don't know of any, but people come. They want to talk to us, they want to give us feedback, they, they want to engage. And the best thing they tell us is, why are you charging so little? This is essential for us. I mean, you guys won't be able to survive. And you know, one thing, uh, this, is, uh, this is what I've learned in business for the past two years. If your customers are coming and telling you and they're worrying about your business model, I think you're doing something right. So this is one of the pictures of our town halls and the customers are telling us, well, why are you charging so little? My, one of my favorite moments from Nextrop was when one of the ladies, a working mom, she came and she said, you know, I don't wait for water anymore. You guys have made us free. And that in itself, you know, sort of encapsulates what the satisfaction you get. You know, when you, can, when you have the ability to touch and impact the lives of people directly. Not to say that, you know, the traditional route is not right. I mean, it's excellent, you know, there's a nine to five job. I've worked in that, uh, you know, in these places before, consulting the World Bank, you know, they fly you with business class, you stay in nice places, you work in fancy countries, and all, it's all great. But the excitement of doing something on your own, and the satisfaction you get, like I said, of being able to impact the lives of people, that satisfaction is off the scale, absolutely off the scale. Okay, so how many of you know this picture? Okay, come on, how many of you know this picture? You know this picture. This picture is Mahindra Singh Dhoni hitting the final six in the World Cup of 2011. And this picture always inspires me. And there's a reason for that. You see his eyes? His eyes blaze with the passion that he has. And it also encapsulates very, very well where it can take you. So I leave you with three things, very simple three things. Of course, you know, everybody leaves you with three things. So three things. One, don't look for a job. That's easy. In Ian, you know, if you use Ian's methods, no problem. You will get them. But don't look for that, just, just that job. 
try and find something that you're truly passionate about and not that you know that jargony passion that we talk about everybody talks about that something that truly excites you something that puts this look in your eyes when you go back today find out where your water supply is coming from what is the quality what is the frequency at which you receive this supply and if you want to do anything about it give me a call thank you